Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celeb news. Now today we have. Hey yo, look, 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 look. Today's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. You're gonna have to put your thinking cap on for today. Okay. Uh, we got um, Dane Dash putting you on game. We, uh, Jay Prince's name being mentioned. We also got um, uh, uh, academics talking about Jay Z being behind what you call it. We got protective orders in case uh, on uh, um, on case discoveries, man. We got Mace bring, bringing uh, bringing something back to our remembrance. Diddy and his moms being weird. Little scrap you on the baby oil it's insane all right we even got bigfoot in here and dr umar okay again thanks for tuning in to celeb source show if this is your first time to the channel man be sure to hit that like button if you feel any part of the content we definitely appreciate that that notification bell's waiting for you to tap it so go on and touch it okay touch that joint like it's 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 like it's you on a friday night you know what i'm saying uh, uh i hope you don't got no kids listening check this out it's gonna be too crazy today listen we gotta set this one off. Um, this is this might make you smile, Doctor Umar. Okay, this man might be the blackest person you've ever met. Okay, hopefully this plays. Okay, take a listen to what this man had to say. Take a listen real quick. Explain that a little more. We said do I put black over everything. I, I asked you a couple of questions. Like, Go ahead. Black magic or white privilege? Black magic. Okay. Black coffee or white wine? Black coffee. Black and miles or white owls? I blow black and miles smoke on my ancestor shrine, so I'm going with the black and miles. Would you rather slip on black ice or play in white snow? Mm. Let me slip on the black ice. Would you rather have black gums or white teeth? Mm. Would you rather? Okay, but if the gums are black, what color are the teeth? Ooh, that's a good question. Mm. White? Give me the black gums. Okay, with a piano, do you hate there's more white keys than black, or does it make you happy that the black keys are on top of the white one? Mm. It makes me happy that the black keys give you a stronger sound than the white one. Wow. Would you rather be in a blackout or listen to white noise? Would I rather be in a blackout or listen to white noise? I would rather be in a blackout because I do most of my meditation in darkness. Are zebras white with black stripes or black with white stripes? Mm. They're black with white stripes. <laughs> Damn. I'm black over everything. You put black over everything, Dr. Uma? Yeah, yo, hey, yo, hopefully that played, man. And if it didn't, man, I feel sorry for your mother. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I said it. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully that played, but but you know, you know, you know how I feel though. All right, look, that's hilarious what he said. Look, one person in the comments, right? I'll be going to the comment section because, you know, you know what I mean? Look, I like nonsense, right? I went to the comments, okay? There was a question. Somebody asked an additional question. They said, um, what about, how about this question? This said, this question would have stumped Dr. Umar. They said, what about being black with white consciousness or white with black consciousness? I said, ah, that's a good one right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, look, man, look, look, look. That's an excellent question. Um, I, I said it before and I'm going to say it again. It's all fun and games and the whole nine yards, but a preference is a preference. That's number one. OK, and 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 usually I feel like I find errors in extremes. You understand what I'm saying? That is an extreme position usually involves some form of error. All right. Like 98, 99 percent of the time, unless like you are extremely down with the most high. OK, the world, the, look, the world is dynamic. OK, no one thing is always the right thing at all times. You know, what I mean, all the piano keys are right at certain times and all those same piano keys are wrong at other times. It all depends on the song being played at the moment. Am I making sense? Does that make sense to you? Do you like the metaphor? OK, is there any wisdom in that? Some black people were kings, right? Others thought that they were kings. They fought, some enslaved the others, sold them off to white people, some weird white ones, took them overseas, enslaved them even worse, used them as free labor. No one came to get us, right? I'm here now looking down the street. Look, I'm looking down the street, right, at the folks that sold me off. Like, oh, word, so you never gonna pick a nigga up, okay? And my brothers are with me right now talking about how great my family is and whatnot. The ones that sold me off, that never came to get me. Okay? And they over there singing hot tracks with Afro beats while we rapping over here about murder every two seconds. I wish a ninja would try to tell me in English, of all language, English, why I dedicate all my focus, why what look, why I don't dedicate all my focus on my quote unquote people that never came to get my head. Look, they watched me get beat in a stranger's house, then came over and asked why I got all these foreign weird practices. <laughs> because the default culture that I had to grow up in since you sold me off was that of the majority. Think about it, man. Black with white consciousness has to do with embracing and white with black consciousness has to do with understanding. The majority understanding the minority versus black with white consciousness. The minority embracing the majority. 
You ain't celeb. I'm too high for all this critical thinking right now. Okay, yeah, I know, I know. Look, okay, the thought is deep. It breaks through the high. You understand what I'm saying? Look, the high can't cloud the thought. You're like, not if I'm way deep in the high. Damn, that's heavy. Look, 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 look. let's stay on the surface with all this, okay? Uh, there's been an official, look, 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 we're gonna switch gears. There's been an official good camera quality sight of a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch or whatever you want to call it. You're like, wait, wait, didn't Nicki Minaj make a song about, I mean, didn't Nicki Minaj make a song about making these things called Bigfoot? I don't, I don't know. I don't remember. I think she did. Okay. But never, that's not what I'm talking about. Someone was in the woods with a camera that had, <laughs> that look, they wasn't shooting the video with a potato this time. Okay. Apparently it had some decent quality. They was in the woods and they saw this. Take a look. Like Bigfoot, that's that ninja Tony from second floor at my job. <laughs> he said he liked to chill in the woods and meditate. And look, 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 look. The only reason why I don't think that that was just a man in the suit is that the person that was recording, he ran as fast as I would have if I seen the joint. As soon as the joint come looking at me, I'm out. You ain't catching me, okay? But but I feel like we need to part of the video when he walked up on it, okay? And what happened after of you tripping out telling us what you saw, man. That look, I think that was a, like an orangutan or something. <laughs> you like, no, that's that ninja Bill. He's going through a divorce. I told him he's got to shave. Whatever. Listen, listen. Let's get to it. Let's get to why you probably tuned in. Okay. Um, we've been hearing a lot about parties and freak offs and stuff like indictments and baby oil and tons and tons of globs of baby oil. You like Ugh, globs? I know, right? Little Scrappy has weighed in on the baby oil situation. One of the few artists to speak on the situation, which tells me he probably ain't on them damn tapes. Take a listen to what little Scrappy had to say about the damn the baby oil. Take a listen real quick. The baby oil. Have you ever seen uh, Blink Twice? Nah. Y'all ain't seen that Nah, yet. but give me a synopsis for So Blink Twice, is a, the scenario is, this is rich man, this rich dude that all the girls like, he take all the girls that win something or whatever on a trip to an island, to his house or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they go out there and they have fun every night. Mm. They get drunk, they have wild parties, they pop uh, hallucinant, hallucinogens and all that <laughs> shit, and they be gone. But I ain't gonna tell the whole story, but I know I'm gonna say one part is one of the girls were tied up in the end, right? And he was sitting there looking at her when she looked up, and he said, man, last year you did it, but this year I didn't even think you could pull it off. I said, this year? Man, they didn't even know they have been there for a couple years. They think they still been there for a couple of weeks and months. It's because they so drugged up. They so drugged up. You know what I'm saying? And from what I heard that the baby oil got some kind of shit in there where they pour in your drink, that shit make you forget shit. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, so it's so it's even deeper than we even than yeah, we really think. Yeah, because why would you have a thousand yeah, bottles of baby oil? Because like, everybody's just making jokes on some like... But, but, but even, 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 but even that... Yeah, thanks for spoiling part of the movie, bro. Okay? But, but listen, man. I think Zoe Kravitz is involved in the making of that film, Blink Twice. I definitely am planning on seeing that joint, you know what I mean? In fact, I was about to watch it last night, but since I spent all my money from the damn dock workers fiasco, I'm not dropping $20 right now, you know what I'm saying? Thanks, news, okay? Now what I'm gonna do with all this cream of wheat and toilet paper? I should, look, I should TP the docks. You're like, why you get toilet paper? We make that here. Because everybody was buying the toilet paper because they think we don't. <laughs> Never mind that, listen. A lot of people think that there was like GHB or some kind of drug in the baby oil and it wasn't just baby oil. Like it was mixed with something else that maybe kind of puts people under or whatever. I don't know. The internet, look, the internet is, is putting all kinds of things together right now, okay? Um, uh, and, and, remember when we heard the thing about IV drips, like folks needing IV drips? Like, like, my, like why would they need IV drips? See, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. And, and, and you know they're trying to hide it now, right? Look, look, I'm going to get back to that in a second, okay? I need you to take a look, right, at this weird clip. Come on, now you're going to do As soon as I start recording Jose, now you're going to be start working on the yard, bruh. You're like, is he really named Jose? 
Jose uh, uh, Mika, I, Mika, I don't know what his name is. I don't know what his name is. Okay, but that's my it's my people's uh, dad. You know what I mean? Anyway, never mind on that. Listen, um, listen. Take a look at this weird clip that I bumped into on the internet involving the diddler and his mother. This is going to be strange, okay? Um, and he mentions the IV drip thing. Take a listen. Shit's getting weird. Part infinity. Look, let me introduce you to my mom. Call Ma Dukes. Hi. She's getting drip with me. She's hydrated. What's up, Ma? Love you too. Ma, I freshly dipped on. Yeah, my mom's single. But yeah, for real. Ma, do might have a good time. Is the ain't in the house playing. The outside moving and shaking, baby. She come with me to strip club. I don't care. For real. It's my dog. You know, I'm gonna touch um, the floor with her palms. You know. Flat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the more and more videos that come out about this whole Diddy shit, the weirder and weirder it gets. What do y'all think mama knows? I think mama knows everything. <laughs> I think mama knows everything. The one phrase I'm using throughout this whole Diddy thing, the one phrase I'm using that I've caught myself using so much is what do you mean by that? Because all these videos that be popping up of celebrities back in the day or just people saying stuff, it just looks weird now. It sounds weird. Like I heard LeBron say, and I ain't saying LeBron's involved, but I heard LeBron say, ain't nothing like, ain't no party like a Diddy party. I looked at the screen and I said, what do you mean by that, bro? <laughs> this finna be a wild ride. That is if they don't offer him first. Yo, yo, why she, she's getting a drip? She's hydrating? Why? <laughs> Look, I like what bro said. What do you mean? Puff said mom touches the floor with her palms. what that mean? Look, look, what do you mean by that, bro? See, that remind this reminds me, right, of what Mace said uh, a, a couple years ago, I think it was. What Mace said to Puff. What do you say, Sauce? Let's go. Let's go. Yo, how dare this nigga told me he wanted receipts? Let's start with your mother, nigga. Your mother got the receipts, nigga. Everything is in your mother's name. That's the one who got the receipts, nigga. You need more proof, nigga? Big ain't here, so Big can't give you no receipts. He dead. Craig Mack can't give you receipts. He dead. What are you talking about? Who else? Black Rob can't give you receipts. He dead. And everybody else you may sign paperwork so they can't talk about what I'm talking about. I'm the only one with the guts. And I sign it, nigga. Because I need the money. All money ain't good money. Remember that. Remember that. Remember that, nigga. You know who to play with, nigga. See what he said? He said, your mother got the receipts. See, this joint is, is a little bit more elaborate. There's a lot, this is a complex clock with lots of moving parts, lots of moving cogs, you understand? Now, interestingly enough, right? It appears that there is a protective order involving um, the case that has come out. Prosecutors and lawyers for Sean Combs have agreed on a protective order regarding case discovery that specifies sealed material will not be posted online, quote unquote, including any social media site such as Facebook or Twitter, close quote. Now, that's according to the legal document. Um, the legal document states, uh, well, hopefully, look, I, look, hopefully source has the image up of what the legal document states, right? But, um, uh, and you can pause the video if you want to read the legal jargon, okay? But to put the legal documentation into um, layman's terms, because, you know, the legal, look, what the legal document said, let me see if I can pull it. It said the disclosure and treatment. It says disclosure material shall not be disclosed by the defendant or defense counselor, including any successor counsel other than set forth herein and shall be used by defense solely for the purpose of defense. I'm not going into it. I'm not going to read all of that. Let me give it to you in layman's terms. Okay. The document in layman terms says this. It says that the defendant and their legal team can only use certain confidential materials. That's the disclosure material to defend against the charges in this specific case. And they are allowed to use the materials for preparing for the trial, as well as for any appeals or legal challenges within one year of the case's conclusion. However, they are not allowed to share or post the materials on the Internet 
including social media sites or other media platform, public platforms, unless the material has already been made public by the court. And they are also prohibited from sharing the materials with the media. Now, this excerpt applies to the defense, but the prosecution is also bound by similar rules of confidentiality. So any of the weird name, uh, any of the names and stuff like that, and some of the weird behaviors, a lot of that information uh, could be um, uh, made confidential and it cannot be released, which, which essentially sounds like, if I'm understanding this correctly, it sounds like um, a lot of the people that may have been involved in a lot of the shenanigans, you're not gonna know about. We're not gonna know about. They're keeping it private which is very, very fascinating because if there are monsters involved, if there, there are people that are, you know what I'm saying, that are involved, they're keeping all that quiet? Who's paying for all of that to keep it quiet? Now, um, uh, the, the prosecution being bound by similar rules of confidentiality, that's most likely outlined in a different part of the document, but I, we would need to look at the whole document to be sure. Now, I asked a few questions to the internet, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm gonna need you to play, pay close attention to, to what I asked and the responses that I got from the internet, okay? I asked a few questions, all right? I like to go to um, the chat, to, ch to, to the chat and ask the chat, yo, man, okay? I asked a question, I, I need you to pay close attention to this part, okay? This actually might be um, something to consider. I asked the chat, was Diddy's label owned by Universal, okay? It says, yes. Bad Boy Records had a distribution deal with Universal Music Group at one point. While the label itself was independent, its albums were often distributed by larger companies like Universal. Over the years, Bad Boy had different distribution partners, including ones with Arista and Atlantic Records. Okay, so I so Universal, you got that in mind? I need your thinking cap on. I asked the next question: Was Universal owned by Seagram's Liquor? The the chat told me. Yes, Seagram owned Universal at one point, the late 90s. Uh, like what, what's the late 90s? The Seagram company, a major liquor company, acquired a controlling stake in Universal, which included Universal Music Group. However, by the early 2000s, Seagram sold its entertainment assets to Vivendi, a French media company, as part of the larger shift in the, in the Seagram's business strategy. So get what, I, get what we asked. Um, was Bad Boy owned by Universal? Yes. Was Universal owned by Seagram's? Yes. I said, was Seagram's owned by someone by the name of like the Bromf man family? It says, Seagram was a Canadian company founded by the Bromfman family, specifically Samuel Bromfman in the 1920s. The Bromfman, Bromfman family played a major role in building Seagram into a major liquor company before moving into the entertainment industry like Universal. Okay. And then it asks, oh, does that clear it up or were you thinking of something else? Because that, because I, I, I gave, I gave the wrong name. I thought it was Bronzeman, but it was Bronfman, right? B-R-O-N-F-M-A-N. I said, did Claire Bronfman own an island in Fiji? The chat said, yes, Claire Bronfman who is part of the Bronfman family, did own an island in Fiji. She purchased Wakaya Island, which was a luxury private island in 2016. Claire Bronfman is also known for her involvement in NXIVM. Now, NXIVM was a cult, right? It was a self-help sex cult, okay? It says, her purchase of the island drew attention to her wealth and connections to NXIVM. Was this what you were curious about? This is what it asks me. I said, yeah, because since, you know, I asked, since Diddy was charged with, you know, trafficking, I'm wondering if all this is connected to Universal and the Bronfman. And it said, oh, I see that you're trying to connect some dots. It says, um, while Bronfman's involvement in NXIVM and the charges against her for her role in that organization have drawn attention to her family, Diddy's current situation seems unrelated to NXIVM or the Bronx as of now, okay? And then it goes, the entertainment industry is complex and the relationships between powerful people and companies can be tangled. 
Uh, but unless new evidence surfaces, there isn't a direct link between these individuals or entities in your context. What are your thoughts on it, right? I asked, did Bronfman, and I get if you if I lost you, so let me try to catch you up to speed real quick. Bad Boy was owned by Universal. Universal was owned by Seagram's. Seagram's was connected to uh, the Bronfman family, right? And the Bronfman family has a person by the name of Claire Bronfman who had an island in Fiji. And that island in Fiji and Claire Bronfman was connected to a sex cult called NXIVM, okay? I asked if that Claire Bronfman was associated with a man named Keith Rainier, okay? You're like, who is this? Who is this? I'm getting to it. Just hold your horses. My internet told me Claire Bronfman was closely associated with Keith Rainier, and Keith Rainier is the leader of that sex cult NXIVM. He founded the sex cult, but was later revealed to be the, the, the whole organization was revealed to be a cult that engaged in illegal activities, including trafficking of a sexual nature and forced labor. Along uh, Bronfman, along with her sister, Sarah, were the key financial backers of NXIVM. And Claire played a significant role in supporting Rainier's operations. So the Claire Bronfman, who was connected to um, uh, Seagram's, which is over Universal, this Claire Bronfman has this island with this sex cult. Are you understand what I'm saying? She's a backer. Of the and she's connected to the leader of the sex cult. I don't know if any of this has anything to do with anything. I'm just reading to you what I read on the internet, okay? This, this is letting you know what interests me. Um, the internet says in 2020, Claire Bronfman was sentenced to nearly seven years in prison for her involvement, primarily related to identity theft and helping Rainier carry out illegal activities. He himself, Rainier, Keith Rainier, he was sentenced to 120 years in prison for various crimes that included sex trafficking, okay? The internet starts asking me, do you think there are parallels between this and Diddy's situation? I said, yeah. Is Rainier the guy that paid for Epstein and Bill Cosby's lawyers? The internet told me, no. Keith Rainier is not known to have paid for their lawyers because El Epstein and Cosby, they, they, they got their own money, essentially is what it told me, okay? Um, and then I asked another question. Here's my last thing I'm gonna tell you on this. I said, um, it said, uh, um, I said, is there a building on Wakaya Island where there is a hotel where many celebrities have stayed? And the internet tells me Wakaya Island, that's where the NX IVM is, does have a luxury resort. Wakaya Club and Spa, which has been a retreat for many high-profile celebrities over the years. The island's exclusivity and luxurious accommodations have attracted famous guests, including actors, musicians, and business people. And then it started giving me some names. It said people like Nicole Kidman and Bill Gates have reportedly stayed there, enjoying the privacy and seclusion it offers. The resort offers high-end villas and accommodations, making it a popular spot for those seeking a private getaway. It's definitely a place with a reputation for celebrity guests. Do you think this could tie into what you're researching? I said, yeah. And then it said, it sounds like you're piecing together some interesting connections. Wakaya Island history. Of da -da 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 okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going through the, through the list here. Bad Boy is owned by Universal. Universal was owned by Seagram's. Seagram's was, uh, what was it, founded, started, founded? I think it's founded by um, uh, the Bronfman family, right? So yeah, 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 owner of it. Okay, was it owned by the Bronfman? It sounds like you might, see, yeah, Seagram was a Canadian founded by the Bronfman family. Uh, there is a person by the name of Claire Bronfman, who's part of that Bronfman family, who owned an island in Fiji, and she urges, she purchases this private island, this luxury island, and she's also connected to her um, to the sex cult that practiced human trafficking. Um, she was the financier of Keith Rainier, who was the head of the sex cult and um, got 120 years for the sex trafficking. And um, hmm, I don't know. What do you think about all of that? What do you think about the connections that was made there? I mean, I don't want to be conspiracy theory ish. You know what I'm saying? I just asked a couple of questions and you see the connections that were made. What's my time looking like? Am I going too long? So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just, you know what I'm saying? We just putting together the stuff. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> this is heavy, heavy stuff. Okay. Meanwhile, with all of that going on, very tangled with all of that going on, academics, DJ academics, 
who is the ultimate quintessential, that is the ultimate example of a Drake stan, believes, right, that Jay-Z is the mastermind behind a portion of this takedown, seeing that Jay-Z's lawyer is the same one backing the Tupac estate against the diddler. And this is Jay-Z, this is what he believes. He believes that this is allegedly Jay-Z's move to get ultimate power. Take a listen to what DJ Academics had to say. Maybe the way you send a message to the nigga who might have the, the secrets on you to fuck you up is to let that nigga know I got some shit on you outside that I could bury you with. This might be a way to preemptively get ahead of Diddy getting up in there and squealing like a bird. That's what I was thinking. Diddy's in there and he's like Frank Lucas in motherfucking American gangster helping the goddamn cops saying, well, Clive Davis is here. Jay-Z is here. Oh, yeah. Come over here, Fab. He's naming names. And Jay-Z is smart enough to say, this fucker think he about to bring down me and my $5 billion empire. Man, I'm over here chilling with the Queen Bee. Put a couple more cases on this bitch ass nigga. Chat. Did I go too deep on the conspiracy theory with that one? Tell me if this make any type of sense. The best way to keep the nigga in line who's basically stuck between a rock and a hard place is you let him know, no, 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 nigga, you're still fucked. Even if you get out of, you can't get out of that. But even if you did, or even if you thought you could give us up to get out of it, you're still fucked, nigga. These are two working theories. So when I seen this, I said, either Jay-Z is saying, that nigga cooked. Let him take let him take all the blame. Either that or let's send a message to this bitch ass nigga cuz right now he probably trying to tell on us. I don't know. But I'm gonna be honest with you. Let me assume, let's say I'm Jay-Z and let's just say I've never did no funky foolish f stupid shit. But let me say or let me just pretend that I was friends with Sean P Diddy Combs. The same way how I instructed my lawyer to help 21 Savage. The same way how I instructed my lawyer to help Meek with this. Same way I instructed my lawyer to go do A, B, C, and D for other people. You know what I would say to my lawyer? Yo, bruh, stay out of this Diddy shit. I don't care what he did. But if that was my guy, if that was my dude that I was at the brunches with, chilling, sipping douce. I would probably tell my lawyer, bruh, go get another case. You already got the Eric Adams shit. Leave that alone. I don't know if he did it or I don't know if he did. But I, I'm in too many pictures with that nigga. We used to be friends. So when I see Diddy lawyers taking a case to investigate Diddy, when I seen JC's lawyer taking a case to investigate Diddy, to possibly try to time up into some other charges that might include conspiracy of murder, I said, Jay, you a cold nigga, man. <laughs> you a cold nigga, man. <laughs> you a cold nigga. You a cold nigga. I'll leave that at that. Again, I'm just going off of, again, I know some, I, listen, I've, I, I, I've thought this out 20 million times. There's gonna be a retort that says, well, act." Jay-Z can't control Alex Spiro's moves and his moves or who he represents doesn't, you know, doesn't mean that's what Jay-Z thinks. That's a very valid point and I won't knock it. My only retort to that would be, you're right, except we've seen Jay-Z essentially assign this lawyer to multiple people who was in need of help. 21 Savage for for a while when they were trying to get um they were trying to get Bobby Schmurder over to um uh, uh, uh Epic and Epic no, no no to Rock Nation and Epic wasn't paying the bill 
Alex Spiro was representing Bobby Schmurda. You, you know why? Remember I told you Bobby Schmurda's career. Epic, when he came out of jail, Epic stopped fucking with him because they seen that um, Rock Nation was interfering with them. Remember he came out with the Rock Nation, had all that? Go look in court. Alex Spiro, Bobby Schmurda. Rock Nation, brother. It's the rock. Again, I'm not saying Jay on no bullshit. But this nigga, when I see him, I see Rock Nation and Jay-Z. And if he's representing Diddy's ops, it tells me Jay-Z's saying, yo, it's been real. But Diddy, I'm going to catch you in the next lifetime, gang. Me and my wife got to go buy a couple more hundred million dollar mansions. And um, good luck to wherever you go. You be all right. Niggas get locked up every day, B. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> so, again, also, if you don't think, oh, the, no, he doesn't have that many associations to Rot Nation. Alex Spiro, Meg Thee Stallion, who's a Rock Nation artist. Oh, when she was sued by the cameraman who claimed that she she fucked the nigga in front of in front of him and forced him to watch. Guess who um uh, 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 guess who represented her in that case? Let's just an attorney for Meg Thee Stallion, Alex Shapiro. Could be coincidence, chat. I don't know. It could be coincidence. It could be a coincidence, man. All right. Yo, I ain't gonna lie to you. And by the way, here's the thing, too. Alex Spiro's past clients. He did help Elon Musk with some shit. Okay. A high profile defamation in case Alec Baldwin he just got him off uh, uh, on this um involuntary manslaughter joint Meg the Stallion Robert Kraft Jay-Z Eric Adams and Meek Mill is in there too but I guess he was notable to, enough notable to mention but that was a little bit odd now um uh here's my thing man that's what academics said was interesting, but also take this into consideration. Academics has shown a bias that is likely to cloud his judgment with this angle of conspiracy. You see, Jay-Z picked Kendrick for the Super Bowl. Kendrick is likely to sing Not Like Us. Not Like Us is a clap at academics' favorite rapper, the Canadian artist Drake. And Drake was allegedly attacked by the diddler. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so it makes perfect sense for academics to have smoke for, well, I don't want to say smoke, but it's perfectly understandable for academics to have a little bit of an issue with Jay-Z, seeing that Jay-Z got, got, had a little bit of tension with academics' favorite artist. Now, here's the other, on top of that, Drake is under Jay Prince. <laughs> You're like, what Jay Prince got to do with this? Well, take a listen to what Diddy's security that was accused of violation recently. Big Joe. He was accused of violation, right? And what he had to say on Angela Yee's show. Hopefully this plays. Take a listen to Angela. Um, this clip with Angela Yee and um, Diddy's uh, former security. Take a listen. I might have an exclusive here. That's right. I think we should. Okay. So first off, earlier we played Big Joe. Now Big Joe is the security who was accused of being on these tapes. It's alleged tapes with a uh, with Diddy and this young lady Thalia Graves. Mm -hmm. um, here is what he said when he denied this on NBC. Well, I'm not questioning her integrity. I'm questioning her claims against me. I wasn't the head of the security. You got the wrong man. I've never seen you. I've never did anything negative with you. I've never been in the same room with you. Not only wasn't I there, I wasn't even in New York. 
All right, now the thing about Big Joe is he's very adamant that he is not in it. He's not going. You know, some people would be like, "Oh, did a lawyer tell you not to say anything?" He's like, "I don't care. I didn't do it. I'm not there." He has text messages between them that he wants to make sure that people know about and can see because from the text messages, and Mayno, you know what is you know right the DMs. Oh yeah, the DMs. Him. Basically, it seems like she's trying to confirm that he worked with Puff. And then also confirmed that there was a video shown on a camcorder. And he's like, and she also says, um, if you're not the same person, then I apologize. Mm -hmm. She said, so it seems like she's not sure if Big Joe was the person that she's alleging is on this tape. Now, Big Joe called us because, you know, clearly this is something that if you feel that you're being wrongly accused of something, you're right. going to defend yourself Saying it loud. to the utmost. And here's what he had to say about uh, this alleged tape and the conversation with Dahlia Graves. Not only did she DM me, she tried to guide me through the DMs if you read them. Right. She tried to explain to me, all I need you to do is write a statement like Barnes did, like other people did. I need you to write a statement and I'll keep you out. I said, keep me out of what? But then she got into the threat. Then she brought up, well, me and Mr. J will be down there. Mm. All right. Now, I don't know what J Prince has right. to do with anything, right. um, but you had a question for him. Absolutely. Okay. What he got to do with this, though? It was brought to my attention later on that J Prince, something I don't know about, had a beef with Puffy about slapping Drake. And Drake was calling J Prince, going off of him for not taking up for him against Puffy. And I'm like, that's none of my business. Honestly, yeah. after listening and people calling me, explaining to me that J Prince lawyer is the one who put the 100 people together, I think J Prince is one of the main corporates behind slandering and trying to destroy Puff's character. Mm. Now, these are all allegations. We don't know what's so true is and what's not. So, the lawyer thing, right? So, mm -hmm. is that really? his lawyer um tony busby is a lawyer based out of houston and so that lawyer is representing 120 of um of right but that it, but that girl is definitely connected to jay prince because well from the dms it looks like she did right, mention she, did, jay she definitely name. Meant, yeah i read that mm -hmm. so listen justina's like that know. lawyer needs i'm just trying to break down 120, 120 people. like That's how right. do you even schedule that for the week you got to do like i don't no. know well from what they yes. had what they said previously was that there were even more but they did vet out people to see which claims had merit mm -hmm. and which did not to, uh, be able to proceed and they also have a hotline so if something happened the hotline can, is great a hotline for you real? can call wow. out this is crazy the hotline hopefully that played all right but if it did not play because sometimes, you know, when we post a thing, sometimes they don't play. I got to reiterate, right? If it didn't play, Big Joe said that the lady that tried to file a lawsuit against him, the ex-security of Diddy, threatened him and said that her and Jay Prince would come to see him. So Big Joe says Jay Prince allegedly had a beef with Puff about allegedly slapping Drake and Jay Prince's lawyer tony busby put together the uh, allegedly put together the 120 people to take down the diddler you're like i don't think you know how to use allegedly whatever we're using it okay uh jay prince had a beef with uh, allegedly had a beef with puff about allegedly slapping drake and his the lawyer tony busby put together the 120 people to take down the diddler now i don't know if that tony busby is jay prince's lawyer but it is interesting to note that the lawyer behind the 120 people is based out of Houston. And Houston is Jay Prince. <laughs> you like, this is breaking my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need a brain break. Let's go to my shout outs real quick. So we put in, uh, there's a couple of things that we're looking at, man. I mean, if, you, if Diddy is owned by Universal and you know, UMG, and and uh, or a bad boy was owned by Universal, and Universal was owned by Seagrams, and Seagrams had a family member who had an island, and then the, and then the person that bought the island was connected to trafficking, and she was the backer of the person that that practices with the traff that does the trafficking and got 120. I mean, yeah, when you put money and back people that are into trafficking, that's now you part of the problem, right? And then on top of that. And on top of that, like, damn, this is crazy. This is crazy. Because then that whole song, Not Like Us, was about trafficking. It was largely about trafficking and the people that was potentially involved in the trafficking. And Kendrick's hatred of a lot of the industry has to do with their involvement in human and sex trafficking. Which is why... I, they don't play not like us enough for me. I need to hear it even more because human trafficking is a problem. And I don't care who the entertainers are. 
if, if these entertain if the entertainment industry is involved in human trafficking then take the whole damn thing down wash the whole thing out and start fresh with people that don't do human trafficking hit the like button so we can get videos like this out because more people need to be speaking on this and there needs to be attention drawn to everybody that is involved in trafficking we don't know how long we have before people start muting the voices of people that are speaking on this i'm not saying who is involved in human trafficking i'm saying the people like it, like if these dots connect then these things need to be looked into. I'm not saying any labels are involved in it or anything like that. I just asked the internet some questions and it gave me some answers. And when I put all these answers together, I could formulate my own thing. You can formulate your own thing. I don't want to formulate anything for you. I just put a bunch of questions together that I'm feeling like it is leading me in this direction. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Let me go to my shout outs, okay? What's my time looking like? Am I, am I 26 minutes? All right, look. For you, it might be more. Listen, uh, shout out to who we got on, on a shout out front. Um, shout out to I right, look Anthony McDuffie. Anthony McDuffie said, "No complexion in the Bible." Revelation one fifteen. His feet was like unto brass, as if they was burned in a furnace. Some people have the spirit, but not the truth part down. <sighs> My goodness, is this what we gonna do? Really? You're, you're trying to make Jesus as black as possible as you possibly can make it. You're going to make his complexion as black as possible. Then you're going to use the scripture in Revelation where they talk about a glorified Christ who got a sword coming out of his mouth. Right. And eyes like flames of fire. So you're saying the bronze is complexion. So how are you going to explain the, 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 the double edged sword that came out of his mouth and the head that was white like wool? How are you going to explain that part? Uh, April Lassiter said. Bro, nobody's mad at you, celeb, but you're 2,000 percent wrong. 2,000? April said, he only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but it's not about complexion. Yeah, so, yo, 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 the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He did say he came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He did say that, okay? But you, you got to understand part of the, the prophecy, and it's listed also in the book of Daniel, okay? It's also listed in Isaiah, all right? God's purpose was to let the whole world know about him through the Jews, okay? But in Deuteronomy, he already said it. He said that um, I'm going to turn from the Jews and utilize, or, or the Hebrews, and and um, or, or, or Abraham's people, or whatever you want to call it, right? I'm going to turn from them, and I'm going to turn to the Gentiles. It's a 70-week prophecy, okay? He said from the time that the temple is, um, the commandment for the temple to be born, to the end, is a period of approximately, I think it was 490 years or 70 weeks, right? It's a 70 week prophecy. You have to look into this, okay? The 70 week prophecy, which we calculate to be about 490 years. And from the time the commandment of the temple was given to 483 years, it says the Messiah will be cut off, which the Messiah did die after that period of approximately 400 and I want to say 83 years. So there's still a seven, a seven year period that has to happen. That seven year period could not happen because the Messiah would at that point stop interacting with the Israelites um, um, to spread the message, turn to the Gentiles, which he declared in uh, Deuteronomy, it's also listed in Romans chapter 9 and Romans chapter 11. He said he's going to stop working with the Israelites to spread that message. Turn to the Gentiles to spread the message because the Gentiles, after they cut off the, I mean, the Jews, after they cut off the Messiah, he would turn from them and utilize the Gentiles during that seven year period. Right. Um, uh, oh, before the seven year period, the last seven year period has to happen the gentiles are spreading the message but once he stops working with the gentiles he turns back to the jews which uh continues the last seven years of the 70 week prophecy you understand what i'm saying once the gentiles are out of the way or the christians are out of the way he continues the process of the 70 week prophecy listed in daniel you understand what i'm saying so uh, to continue that part, you could see there is a seven year period that plays out in the book of Revelation, starting from Revelation chapter four, all the way to Revelation 19. This is where we get three and a half years of peace, followed by three and a half years of, of all kinds of insanity. All right. That's um, three and a half, three and a half. That makes seven. 
All right, that's the last seven years until the end. You get what I'm saying? This is uh, uh, when in Luke, when um, he said the spirit of the Lord, and, and I think it's Luke chapter three or four, whatever. He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel and to do this and to do that. And he stopped right before um, the day of judgment because that part, and to announce the day of judgment. But he didn't. That day of judgment hasn't come yet. That's the Revelation 19. That's the day of judgment. I'm going too crazy with it. I can't listen. Um, we're going to have to come back to that. All right. Uh, April, April asked him, I'm, I'm sorry. I was supposed to be giving you a shout out, but then I got sidetracked because you know how I am. She said, um, he only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's not about complexion. It's all about the connection, but feet like brass burned in a furnace is clear. All those people are black people. I'm not sure why you're afraid to just tell the truth. It's not about complexion. It's about truth. And the truth is that all those biblical heroes were people that look like me and they were all persecuted by people who look like them. Listen, listen. Do, um, I, I jump over to Dominic. I got to give because then a couple of people had comments, but Dominic in that thread said, let's put this to rest. John was in the spirit when he had that vision. 100 percent. That's what it says. John is in the spirit when he has that vision, meaning the details of his appearance were symbolic and not literal. Revelation 115 goes on to. And that's true. What Dominic is saying. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day when. Revelation 115 goes on to say that he held seven stars in his hand and a double edged sword came out his mouth. Would a human on earth be able to do those things? No. Yeshua's earthly appearance was never discussed except saying he wasn't one to be admired that people turned their faces from him in public, meaning he probably looked regular or homeless. Isaiah 53 1. No other details were shared. Get used to it and stop trying to make Yeshua African slash Hamite. He was the son of Shem not ham see this is what i'm saying like and anybody that's really doing the study they could see this that's why i said excellent point dominic okay let me give this to you all right because a lot of people appreciate the biblical knowledge okay so i'm a i'm a screenshot the image what's my time looking like let me see yeah yeah yeah. this video's gonna go over but you know what it is you can click off if you want listen if you're scared of god in the bible if you only want to hear about what people are doing with their buns and and the drugs and people getting arrested then you know what i'm saying i can understand if you want to leave but if you don't mind getting a little god in your in your news okay the scriptures go like this revelation 113 and standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like a human or the son of man this this is jesus because he says you know i'm the one that was alive and died and came back to life Okay. And he says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, by the way, in the same verses. It goes, the person that was standing in the middle of the lampstand, he was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. It goes like this. His head, his head, and his hair were white like wool. So one thing I know for certain, his head was white like wool and his hair was white like wool. This is not a white man. His head was white like wool. Okay. And his hair was white like snow. And, um... His eyes were like flames of fire. There's not a red eyed ninja. Okay. This, no. All right. This is the glorious God. All right. Um, his feet were like polished bronze. His feet were like polished bronze refined in a furnace. And his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. And he held seven stars in his hand and a sharp double edged sword came out his mouth and his face was like the sun in all of its brilliance. So we're seeing all kinds of colors. We're seeing a head that's described as white. We're seeing feet that's described as bronze. We're seeing a, a double edged sword emerge from his mouth and the face shining like the sun in all of its brilliance let me ask you a question when you look up in the sky what color the sun look you understand what i'm saying we're not talking about a complexion you that's a, that's like a earth you, you, you're trying to make this into this thing to make yourself feel better about see god is my color bruh you know what i'm saying god is like come on man right um take into consideration what dominic said man no other details were shared uh he was a son of Shem, not Ham. Um, let me know your thoughts on that. Let me know if you hate what Dominic said. Mandolin, and, and, and let me know if you are planning to ignore the details like a sword coming out of his mouth and face brilliant like the sun. Okay, because I don't know too many black faces that shine. like You know what black faces shine like the sun? I don't. 
Okay? I got some light-skinned people in my family that are bright yellow. I still wouldn't say they shine like the sun. But it said his head was white. Like wool. Mandalinka, uh, shout out to her. She said, hi guys. My favorite thing every morning is to drink my coffee listen to you. Oh, I appreciate that. She said, I love to listen to your voice. What, this voice right here? This is the voice you like? Manda Linka. She said, you made me laugh. And I love the shout outs part two. I'm Christian and you have taught me a lot. Ah, I appreciate that. And she said, I want to learn more. Thank you for the great job you do. Greetings from Sweden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One day I'm going to get into uh, uh, the, 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 the eschatology thing. That's the 70 week prophecy, but I can't. You just got to rewind what I said and keep going back and forth. Oh, 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 better yet, I got a better idea. Read Romans 9, Romans 11. Romans 9 and 11 give you a lot. Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 11. It, it lets you know about um, how God was using the Jews to send his message. And he made it very clear. Yo, man, I'm going I'm to pause messing with the Jews. I'm going to get them jealous by turning to the Gentiles. That's listed in Deuteronomy. And then he said, after I get to the, um, the Jews jealous by messing with the gentiles i'm gonna turn back to the jews this is where you get the 144,000. you understand what i'm saying um but in heaven there are all nations of people all nations of people there are white people in heaven white okay white as white people as white as raw chicken white pink whatever you want to call it okay there are black people people that are so black they're purple there are Asian people, there are red people, you got Native Americans in there, you got, uh, uh, what else we got? We got, we got black people, white people, red people, olive color people, all nations are in heaven, and white people, okay? Let me ask you a question. Did God make white people? That's one. Second question, you, for you racists out there, are there white people in heaven? And, and, and are you cool with that, okay? If there are white people in heaven, do you still want to go? Because a lot of y'all be acting like y'all don't. Um, yeah, God is not, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, that look, that was Jonah's problem. Jonah was racist. He still made it though. Anyway, uh, let's get right back to right this back. And finally, Wonder Bread, I needed to get to you, but we're gonna get to you tomorrow because I like what you said, okay? Um, Wonder Bread says something nice, and uh somebody else says something nice. Wonder Bread says something great, and um, I forgot. Okay. Check this out though. Check this out though. Uh, oh, Rhyme of Reason, Rhyme of Reason. Rhyme of Reason, she has some lyrics for your boy, okay? Who I should play some lyrics right now. I'm gonna play it in the next video, Rhyme of Reason. She's like, oh, come on, you can play it now. All right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, Source, we got, a clip, we got a clip of Rhyme of Reason, okay? She showed up in our comment section. What did she say? She said, uh, um, she said um, they might be getting a divorce, but does it really matter if she's gonna continue to make public appearances with him? Oh, she's talking about Beyonce and Jay-Z. She said, I doubt she's going anywhere because it really doesn't matter. She's implemented regardless. Uh, I'm implicated, I think is what you meant to say. But, um, uh, all right, all right, Source, can we play a clip of Rhyme of Reason's raps, please? Now don't say you love me cause I feel the hate Don't never promise me the world and then leave me the shame This will of fortune keeps on turning resulting in pain How can you ask to take the lead and then leave me astray I guess I must have missed the message that love is a game It's crazy how someone would use you up just to maintain He mixing up the truth for lies, serving poisonous drinks Put me through overload, I empty my memory bank But that inner work made it clear You can't possess the blessings if you living out of fear I walk the road of thorns from the roses keep bare Shed it, blood with every step, but never drop the tip. So tell them I'm hit, and I'ma finish what I started. My grandma always told me on this world, I leave them up. God rearranged disaster to a masterpiece of art. And ever since that day, I've been shining through the dark. Y'all revive my heart. <laughs> yeah. All praises to the most high. Hey. Look, killing the game, killing the game. Got, got me stuttering over here, rhyme of reason, okay? Looking all perfect. All right, look, 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 look. Let's, let's wrap this bad boy up, okay? Uh, Dame Dash. Dame Dash is speaking on what's really priceless in life. Now, yes, his teeth fell out. Yes, he walked into a door. But those are human things. All of us do dumb things like that. You know what I'm saying? You've walked into a door before, and it was funny when it happened, okay? You slipped and fell. That was funny when it happened, too. You fell down the steps, trying to go down the steps too fast, and you slid down the steps. Some of y'all fell down them steps today. You know who you are, okay? Uh, you said all kinds of crazy things. You got in trouble. People done talk to you sideways and you let it slide. Um, so, you know, just in case, you know, so what? Dame Dash had his teeth fall out, okay? But he, that don't mean he ain't telling you the truth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, take a listen to what the man had to say. Pick my son up from school and then we go He We go by what he wants to do. He wants to play golf. He has passion for it at three years old. And then we go play golf 
It's so hot out in Florida, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna hold you. Until November, it's crazy out here. But we swim after that, before he goes to bed. And then he goes, takes his bath, I play centipede, the video game. Um, while he's taking a bath, you know, Rocky gets a wine, and then they watch TV. Right now, he's three years old, he wants to watch Caddyshack every day. You know, my daughter, uh, Ava, you know, watching her be, uh, uh, grow into being an adult and making her all her dreams come true, modeling. My, my daughter Tallulah moved and, you know, going through trying to support, you know, that change of life. My son Lucky, he's in college, his third year, he just started boxing, you know, and my, my son uh, uh, Boogie. I, I love to see him embracing being a man. He's in Vegas, not asking me for a dollar in like 10 years doing real jobs, you know what I'm saying, while I'm doing me, and then also making music and helping out. I'm really happy with where I'm at, because my family is connected and together, and that's all that counts, and I finally get to be in a relationship. Every day I celebrate that, you know? And if, if someone, if you've never been able to experience this type of, of harmony in your life, try to find it. Fuck the parties. You go to that with your girl, or to go to the birthday parties, but I just, when I'm in the pool playing with my kids and all that, there's no girl, there's no party, there's no nothing that would be better than that. You know? Watching my, my girl be proud, yo, my girl is now a professional writer. She's so sick, she, she's an elite at something. To the extent that Georgetown had to go get a master's. I can't say that? I'm proud, I'm like a proud, you know what I mean? Like, like Rocky is looking at as a scholar. Her peer circle of principles. You know what I mean? I'm so proud of. That's priceless. Everything I describe, money cannot buy. 100%. Dane Dash is right. Um, we must remember what is really and truly priceless in life. I tell you before and I'm going to tell you again. A lot of people that are dying, they never say, uh, uh, make sure my rims stay shiny on my car. They never say, uh, yo, my mansion, make sure you make sure you take care of the roof. They never talk about their house. They never talk about their possessions. When people are dying, they want the people that they love next to them. It's about the people that you love, okay? Um, and, and, and really being nice to them. So make sure you are good, not nice, good. Make sure you are good to the people that you love and then make sure you treat them with value. Okay. And a, lo a, lo a large part of that includes just listening to what they got to say and being available for them. You don't even got to say stuff sometimes. Just being available and ready to listen to what they got to say. You know what I'm saying? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, man. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for Celeb News.